Hi, my name is Ralph Lowen, and I'm the CEO of Eidergy, your Active Directory Resiliency Experts. I could regale you with 20 years of uh, Active Directory and identity and access management stories, but I will not. However, we've been around long enough and seen into enough customer cupboards to discover many failed identity management and single sign-on projects in almost every kind of company. I entitled this uh, session, Fixing the Joiners, Movers, and Leavers uh, JML Process, not a journey for the faint-hearted. Um, and here are the cupboards that we've looked into in many different places. Uh, the, we have these cupboards that are full of failed single sign-on and identity management projects. These are not easy projects to take on. And we're going to look today just at that one process, the JML or the joiner mover lever process. Uh, just an introduction. I love this cartoon from, uh, from Dilbert. Uh, we have the manager coming along. This will be your cubicle to the brand new employee. In six weeks, our IT people will connect you to the network so you can do your job. Oh, and I'll stop by every few minutes to see what you're doing. And, and on, much too often, this just typifies the kind of experience that the new employee gets coming into a company. And it also uh, illustrates some of the challenges that the enterprise also has. Uh, because we do have user expectations on the one side, and we have enterprise expectations on the other side. Uh, so the user has all of these expectations, this, this seamless one-touch access, one device, one experience anywhere, personal and work on the same device, personalization and privacy still being respected, any application, any device, and anywhere access. But on the other side, we have these growing expectations of the enterprise, information security, isolation, personal corporate data, uh, compliance like GDPR, and then finally identity, the device, the user, and application. And we have to secure all of these things on behalf of, of our customers and our employees. And of course, uh, all that proprietary information that is you know, the, the, the select pro intellectual property of our companies. And so we get these expectations. At the center of it, we also get HR when we start talking about identity. And the HR department is really responsible for that JML process. They are there at the beginning and they know most of the information. You can see in the illustration there, the different kinds of responsibilities that they have. Most HR departments have implemented expensive HR information systems that are up to date with extensive information on an employee, which department they work in, in which office, their responsibilities, who they report to, who reports to them, and so on. So let me ask you, where is your company's joiners, movers, and levers process today? Well, let's start with the joiners. The typical joiners process. You know, 90% of the companies that we talk to, when we're called into them, the joining or the onboarding process begins with a manual IT service ticket that is initiated by human resources. You see the new employee comes. HR says, okay, we have this new employee. They enter the employee into the human resources information system or the HRIS. At that point, they need to manually create an IT service ticket. That ticket comes across to the help desk or whatever particular group is responsible now for doing the configuration so this employee can start getting the accesses and, and there's an identity created and perhaps many identities created in different systems. And so they reach, they will go into Active Directory and perhaps they'll provision some licenses in Office 365. They may give a user account in, ER, in an ERP machine um, tool or perhaps they use an Active Directory account to give permissions. But there's lots of steps to be done in many different tool sets. This is just representative of many that are necessary for an employee to do his or her job. And of course, once IT receives it, they've manually now, based on the information or the profile provided, okay, they've gone through into multiple systems. They're finished now. Now manually, they close the ticket, which then informs the HR that the task is completed. Now HR can have spent millions on the best HRIS and work diligently to keep all the identity profiles up to date. They know the start dates. They know when someone is promoted or changes departments. They know the moment someone is terminated. They own the data in their own system. So it is up to date and it's auditable. What could possibly go wrong? What are the problems with the manual process? Well, manual processes are prone to errors. 
They're prone to delays, forgetfulness, deprioritization, busy schedules, emergencies, illness, vacations, and so on. We're familiar with the issues, and HR is at the mercy of the process that they don't have control of. So that's a typical process. Here we have more a more ideal process. In order for the joiner process to be HR driven, it needs to be automated. If we can remove the help desk from this process, HR can effectively be in control of their own processes. And that process should look like this one where the HRIS is connected directly to the directory service. In this case, I put in Azure AD. And when a new employee is added in the system, HRIS system, it is updated in the systems to the right. It is deployed in Azure AD, and from there it can be synchronized into Active Directory. It could provision licenses in Office 365, and it could give access to the ERP system. And this can be automated, and we should indicate that with the arrow that's going both directions. Okay, once it's done, it feeds back into the system that this task is completed in an automated way. And so you're still prone to error, but the error will be human resources error and not an IT error. So what are the benefits? <clears throat> well, reduced costs for help desk, which is no longer involved in creating these accounts and provisioning these licenses. You'll get reduced error rates. You get improved SLAs. We can get improved productivity. The new employee is productive faster. You get improved satisfa customer satisfaction and finally improved governance, compliancy, and ultimately less audit failures. So is it possible to assign Office 365 licenses, access to SharePoint sites and Teams, okay, access to ERP or POS or a gazillion other systems based on the configuration in the HRIS? Well, yes, it is. It is possible. We, uh, we have done this for, for many different companies. <clears throat> Uh, and if Azure AD is in place, there are thousands and thousands of connectors available today for the most, uh, for almost all of SaaS applications, or a huge amount of SaaS applications, greatly simplifying and reducing the cost of implementing this automated process. Now, you may not need an expensive identity management system. I have not indicated any in identity management system in this diagram. And you might say, well, why not? There are a lot of systems out there today that are very powerful. But it is possible that you own all the pieces necessary today. Okay, everything necessary for implementing the scenario on the screen. Just recently, we worked with a global enterprise class company in London using primarily Microsoft tool sets to do exactly this. They have over 50,000 employees. There was a huge disparity between the HRIS information and the configuration applied by IT. Users, some users had gone years with the wrong accesses. Uh, they had a oh, they had a three week onboarding process to get everything done. They have brought this down into a day or two for a new employee, and they've optimized everything by well, the entire process. Fixing a joiner process is a huge project. It implies fixing the supply chain. You need to order the right model of laptop to be configured and available at the right time. The human resources uh, information system needs to know the user profile that is typically a group profile, profile for a department, but with some unique permissions for that role, privileges and access rights, licenses, etc. But the tools are available today, and many companies, as I said, already own tools that can manage most of this process if they own Microsoft 365 with some help. Nothing does everything. There's help needed. So let's talk about movers now. Now, the employee has come on board and they have all of their access and they've been working for a year or two and now they are promoted to a role in another department. So once again, HR can update their systems with all the right information. The manual process all happens again if they have to go through help desk, okay? And then of course you start getting into problems if you're dependent on the help desk. The user, uh, let's say the user has gone to a new department, but as typical inside of companies, a user has to do the old role in parallel with a new role. IT must assign all the new licenses, privileges, permissions, and accesses, and the tools for the new role, but leave the old permissions in place during the transition before finally removing those permissions and accesses after a certain period of time. But there's pressure to close the ticket. We have to move on to new problems. So what happens? The ticket gets closed and forgotten. 
the employee lives on with all the accesses for both roles and no one notices because everything works. In fact, give the more permissions you give someone and the more accesses you give them, the less bottlenecks or, or problems or blockages they're going to have. We just had a, a customer who experienced a major embarrassment in this way, and it resulted in a $2 million project for us. A senior executive received a promotion to become the most senior executive in a sister company. When GHR requested the change from IT, someone at the help desk accidentally deleted the executive's Active Directory user account and his Office 365 account with it. When he started his new role, he couldn't log in, he couldn't access his data, he couldn't access his email or SharePoint or his dashboards and so on. This took them a full month to repair. Now, when you take a full month to repair or fix a major problem like this for the senior executive in a multinational global enterprise, it leads to million dollar SSL and identity management solutions. In this case, we might even call the full identity and access management solution. At another London-based company, when we connected their HRIS to Active Directory, there were VPs who discovered that their top people had never been configured as their employees for their department. They had been fumbling along for years with inadequate accesses, emailing information rather than sharing it, and so on. Everyone thought they weren't tech savvy, when in reality, they simply didn't have access. Why not? Well, it's so easy to mess up when things are manual. So we talked about the joiners, we talked about mover scenarios. Let's talk about levers. When it comes to people being terminated or, uh, for whatever reason, suddenly governance and compliance become huge issues. See, it's one thing to mistakenly give access uh, to an existing employee. Okay, they're still under you know non-disclosure agreements and so on as an employee. They still have an obligation to or their company. But when someone leaves, it is possible that this ex-employee is even working for a competitor. If you get this scenario and you forget to disable the access of an ex-employee, you start running into major audit problems. Or as more common, we disable certain accesses, we take care of Active Directory, but we don't realize that someone has granted access to them in another system, particularly in cloud-based systems today. And so we can, we can actually get this situation where a back door has been left open to a critical system. Or we could just mess up again with a manual process. Single sign-on becomes a huge benefit in this area. Okay, a really big benefit. If you can bring everything down to a single user account that grants access to all systems, then disabling one user account blocks all accesses. If only life were that clean and easy, but it's a great starting point. We do a lot of Active Directory consolidations resulting in single sign-on. We were working on a project not that long ago for a bank in another country this time where every employee had eight user accounts in eight different Active Directory forests. So imagine the complexity. By migrating to a single identity, deprovisioning a user in one place means access is instantly denied everywhere where before there would have been eight places to deactivate. By migrating to a single identity, that's it. Instantly you get this kind of um, governance of that user account and automating the process between the HRIS and Azure Active Directory in the image before you would mean that almost instantly everything is shut down to that user if you have been integrating your applications, whether they be SaaS or in-house, to Azure AD. We have made the financial business case to customers to fix the JML process uh, based simply on the time that is invested with the auditors. This can take a huge amount of time. Add to that the help desk time that is saved, the errors that must be fixed through escalation, and the lost production time because employees can take two to four weeks to get all the accesses they need, and the business case becomes even easier to justify. And we've achieved all of this using third-party identity management systems that are well-known to a crowd like this, but also with tools and software available in most Microsoft EA agreements. How do you avoid becoming one of the identity management or SSO skeletons of another failed project? We like to tell our customers one bite at a time. Don't try and eat the whole cookie in one bite, or you may well choke on it. Agile applies here as much as anywhere. Go for the small wins, the sprints. Many small wins make a big win. Providing the right access to the right people 
at the right time. This is what we want to do in the joiners, movers, levers process. Uh, this is what we're trying to achieve in all of identity and access management. Thank you for joining. Um, IDRG works in these four areas that you see on the screen, identity and access management, very closely tied into the cloud, uh, particularly cloud today and the infrastructure management. Uh, we have a team that works on productivity, collaboration and power platform solutions, and finally database platform management. And whether you're looking for a solution that is, is just identity management, or if you're looking more for the identity and access management that can go across all of these different sectors, uh, we are there for you. We've been servicing companies in the UK and Europe since 2006. My name is Ralph Lohan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.